I wanted to ask you that what is wrong if 91% <coughs> of the people are renting Sifuna? And yes. this is according to Charles Henga, who's the PS for housing. Yes. What is wrong with renting to own? Because either way, it's true what you're saying, that maybe people's payslip can't handle it anymore. Yes. But they're paying rent now anyway. Yes. Because they're already here. Yes. What is wrong with paying that rent to eventually own that house? But that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. The time that it takes, you yourself have alluded to the time that it takes for you to be able to actually reach that target of house ownership. And we're saying that you have to address the cost of the house. The cost of the house is the problem. If my payslip cannot be able to make me afford, even people, you, you talk about people paying rent, you can only pay the rent that you are, you are what is it called, your payslip can afford. Yeah, so it's not as if people have this uh, amount of money that they are able to pay, but they are refusing to pay. Everybody, over, every one of us would like to live in a clean environment. All of us, if we were given the opportunity to move into uh, the neighborhood that Halwale lives in, we would do it. But Kenyans are saying, allow me to plan myself. Allow me to plan myself. Even for me, before I went into uh, parliament and got a, uh, got a good mortgage scheme there that only charges me 3%, I can be able to say without a few of contradiction that I was not able to afford a house. And yet, I, I, it's not as if I wasn't making <coughs> money. I was making money and it was not bad money, Trevor. But according to the plan that I have and my cash flow, the things that I need to do today, the, the school fees that I need to pay and the others, you cannot impose on me uh, the sort of uh, mortgage repayment that I am paying right now. I could not afford it then, you know? Okay. So what we are saying is, Please let us have a conversation that is honest with Kenyans and listen to them. They're the ones, the wearer of the shoe is the one who knows where it's pinching him. Okay. If you are saying that your payslip is not uh, able to take any more, even if it is 1%, the government should be able to listen to you. And I want to ask Kalwale, are you a government or a nanny? Because you see, nannies are the ones who pretend that they know what is good for the baby. You are not dealing with idiots. Kenyans are not fools. You are saying there is financial <coughs> literacy. Yeah. People know. People wake up every morning, they earn 500 shillings, and they don't consult you. Okay. They sit there and they plan how they are going to pay rent from that 500 shillings, how they are going to feed their families from that 500 shillings, how they are going to pay school fees. They never come to you for consultation. Okay. So please speak to Kenyans with some respect. They are not idiots. But what are you offering as a solution then? We know that there's a... As a solution, we have said, first of all, uh, Trevor, grow people's incomes grow the number of people who are able to pay or contribute to that fund. Tell us how many jobs, well-paying jobs you've created over the past eight months. What is the plan to grow that pool? Instead of having one cow that you milk until it drops dead, create another cow. Buy another cow so that you can milk two cows a liter each instead of one, that one cow giving you two liters every day. But they're saying, That's what one, we're saying is so but sustainable. saying one of the plans is to have these local artisans employed in this building of these new houses that they then create millions of jobs as a ripple effect. No, that no, 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 that is not a plan because they're not going to, that, that's not a plan to create employment, Halwale. The plan to create employment is to attract investment. You attract investment by creating an atmosphere that allows people to come and invest in your country. Not to allow the sort of anarchy you allow, are allowing in the South Rift that is even discouraging people to invest their money in Kenya. That is how you create jobs. Just one industry, Halwale, you have seen. Uh, I'll give you the example of the team multinationals. One industry, one industry is employing 10, 15,000 people. When Mumias was up and running, Trevor, how many people were uh, employed at Mumias? There are entire towns that sprang up because of Mumias. Mumias Sugar was the biggest taxpayer in Western Kenya when it was doing well. When you <coughs> remove just one of those, the, the, the tax that we lost when Mumias went under is the one that we are now being imposed on as the people who are employed. What we are saying is, show us a plan that will create more taxpayers. More taxpayers, the, the largest taxpayers in the last 10 years have been largely the same people. And in fact, if you look at that list of the top 10 taxpayers, many of them are these tea factories. Grow them, add more, so that the, Kenyans, uh, the, the Kenyan citizen, the ordinary Mwanainchi who has a job like you, can feel some relief, you understand? So we don't see that plan. We don't see encouragement of investment. We don't see a plan to create more job, job uh, creators such that the taxes are distributed more evenly amongst more people than just coming to Trevor every day with housing levy, VAT on fuel, VAT on food. You, you will crumble. You'll okay. fall down and die. There's a